Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. I was wondering, if we have so much technology, why can we make burgers rain down from the sky? No, that's too complicated. Let's talk about something easier, like quantum computer. Come, find out more about it. Technology has come a long way in humanity's history. Ever since the first piece of innovation, the wheel, humans have learned to use resources in their environment to make our lives, in general, easier. At first, these tools helped us with problems that require hard work. Then, they started to help us with our thinking problems when our problems began to get more and more complex and involved more data. Since the 1960s, our technology has kept growing exponentially, allowing computers to get smaller and more powerful at the same time. But this is about to reach its physical limits. Computer chips contain, contain transistors, which is essentially a switch that can either block or allow information to come through. This information is made up of bits, which can take the form of a zero or a one. And all the information on computers is just a combination of these zeros and ones. Nowadays, the size of a regular transistor is around 14 nanometers, and as they decrease in size, it is easier for electrons to ignore the physical barriers that transistors present, using a process called quantum tunneling. To fix this problem, Scientists are trying to use some quantum properties to their advantage by building quantum computers. But what are quantum computers? Quantum computers are machines that use quantum mechanical phenomena to transmit, process, store, and deliver data. Whereas classical computers store this information in bits, quantum computers do it in qubits or quantum bits, where the value of a qubit can not only be a zero or a one, usually determined by the spin of a particle or the polarization of a photon, but also any linear combination of these two states through a, a quantum process called superposition. When you measure, for example, the spin of an electron, it will be either up or down. But before you measure it and collapse the superposition state, these coefficients represent the relative probability of finding the electron in one state or the other. The main difference between bits and qubits is that where four classical bits can take one value out of 16 possible combinations, 2 to the 4, through superposition, four qubits can give you 16 pieces of information at once, minimizing exponentially the amount of operations needed to solve a complex problem or maximizing the amount of information stored in the same space. Once you create a system of, let's say, 300 of these qubits in an entanglement state, where there is a superposition of all these qubits, then it will be like having two to the 300 classical bits, which is as many particles as there are in the universe. There is a problem with this though, and it is that although these qubits can exist in any combination of states, when they're measured, they must fall into one state, and all the information acquired in the superposition is lost. That's the tricky part about quantum computing to design the logic operations necessary to get the final expected result in such a way that this result is a unique state that you are able to measure. In order to fully understand how quantum mechanics and quantum computing works, it's important to know some basic quantum concepts such as quantum entanglement. This phenomenon occurs when two particles interact briefly with each other, influencing each other in a way that the properties of both are connected. For example, it is possible to prepare two particles in one single quantum state, such as when one is observed to be spin up, the other one will always be observed to be spin down and vice versa. This, despite the fact that it is impossible to predict, according to quantum mechanics, which set of measurements will be observed. The concept of quantum computers was first developed in 1980 by Richard Feynman, who explained that classical computers could not model uh, the evolution and mechanics of quantum systems in an efficient way, and that we needed new machines with much more power and efficiency. 
he developed the first concepts of quantum computers by applying quantum uh, physical processes to conventional information science concepts and components, representing binary numbers with two state quantum systems, creating the concept of the qubit. In the first years of the 90s, when more scientists were beginning to get involved in the wonders of quantum computing and its applications, Arthur Elkert created quantum entanglement based secure communications, in which transferring information through these quantum processes, the data transported would be 100% safe. Later, in 1994, Peter Shor developed the famous Shor's algorithm, which allowed quantum computers to factorize large integers, exponentially quicker than the best algorithm in the best super classical computers. In theory, Shor's algorithm was able to crack down the best current cryptography systems available nowadays. This was one of the main events that turned the whole world's attention towards quantum computers. Each year, hundreds of scientists from all around the world develop different logical gates, hardware, and overall new ways in which quantum mechanics and properties can achieve better quantum computing, like quantum teleportation, cloning, and entanglement. A few years ago, in 2016, IBM, the leading company in quantum computers, presented the first commercial usable quantum computer, which anyone can use online, quantum experience. Quantum computers do not look like classical computers, not in design or algorithms. However, however, one can say they look like classical computers in the 50s, where you needed a whole room just to store the computer. Leading technologies today are based on ion traps, superconducting circuits, quantum dots, neutral atoms in lattices and photonics systems. The whole base of a quantum computer is a quantum chip made of superconducting qubits, metal in silicon chips that at very low temperatures will become superconductive. A classical logic gate gets a simple set of inputs and produces a different output. A quantum logic gate manipulates an input of superpositions, rotates the probabilities and produces another superposition as its output. In other words, a quantum computer sets up some qubits, applies quantum algorithms, a sort of combination of quantum gates, to entangle them and manipulate the probabilities, and finally measures the outcome, collapsing the superposition to an actual sequence of zeros and ones. This means that you get the entire lot of calculations that are possible with your algorithm, all of them at the same time. However, you can only measure one result, so it probably may not the one you want. So you must check and try again, but by cleverly exploiting superposition and entanglement, this can be exponentially more efficient than it would be on a classical computer. Just like classical computers, quantum computers also have their limitations. The main issue of quantum computers today is the problem of the coherence, the fact that qubits cannot maintain their quantum properties, like superposition of states, for a long time, although qubits cannot usually maintain them for them for more than a few seconds, current scientists have set the record at 72 hours. Another important issue is the fact that quantum computers are really unstable and must be managed at a very controlled environment. This is due to the fact that the interaction with the outside environment, like dust particles, may entangle or alter the state of the qubits. Cooling is also a problem. The microchip that controls and holds the qubits must be only a few millikelvins to achieve the superconducting properties, making quantum computers also extremely expensive to maintain and run. It is important to mention as well that quantum computers nowadays don't have many qubits, since isolate, isolating each qubit individually is an incredibly complex task, limiting the complexity of problems and algorithms those computers can run. It is important to mention that quantum computers are not expected to be the replacement for classical computers. Their singularity resides not in the speed at which they perform operations, which may be even slower than classical computers, but in the amount of operations needed to solve a problem, which is reduced exponentially. This is why it is not very likely for us to have a quantum laptop or a quantum desktop in the near future, but rather to use it to answer questions that our modern technology is yet to solve.
او نه بس The main applications of quantum computers are modeling in a variety of areas in science, understanding how the human body reacts to specific compounds, simulate how atomic bonds between elements interact, predicting with far more accuracy the climate changes and comprehending the behavior of subatomic particles. Apart from modeling, Quantum computers are also expected to be a game changer in the fields of cryptography, internet security, and artificial intelligence. For now, classical computers are much more effective and useful than quantum computers. These are still in the experimental stage. However, their imminent arrival will surely cause the boost never seen before in physics, medicine, and other fields of science. In the 50s, no one would have thought that we could have a regular computer fit in our pockets. This is why the future of quantum computers is so full of possibilities that we are yet to imagine. What will quantum computer bring us into the future? There is only one way to find out. Mm -hmm.